Welcome to Horror Movies and Beyond. Today, I'm joined by the director and stars of horror comedy film, Deadhead, Gina Powers Hendry, TK Crystal Kima, and Anastasia Washington. <laughs> Yay! Thank you for joining me. Thank so you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Um, yeah, when I saw this short film, because Anastasia brought it up to me when we were hanging out, and I was like, I gotta see this. So I saw it, and I was like, this is so cute. Like, it was, <laughs> it was I mean, it, it has some serious undertones, like a very little that we were talk about, but I was like, this is, it was so entertaining. It got to the point, and like, I like the end when, you know, she got back who she had to get back to, and it was like, okay. I would have done the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Love it. Thank Wouldn't you. we all? <laughs> I know. I was like, man, they all deserve it. Plus some. I, I don't think you did enough. <laughs> so, sequel, sequel. <laughs> yeah. So it is about Wendy, a middle-aged woman who's constantly dismissed. I've been there. We've all been there. And she gets pricked by this thing pulsating a plant, it looks like, or imitating a plant is pulsating and pricked her finger, which it looked real. We're going to talk about those special effects. I thought she really did it. Her attitude starts changing and she starts morphing into something. I, I, I was ex unexpected. Like I was thinking it was going to be disgusting and gross. And then all of a sudden when it panned up, it remind me of 50 sci-fi horror. The way she was moving and stuff like that, I was like, okay, we're on the right track here. It has some hilarious moments, but at the same time, it was like, oh man, I, I get it. You know, like you, you never had a chance to have a voice until something gives you the voice. And then you just go for it. I would have done the same thing. And in the end, when we see some body parts, well, we will talk about. <laughs> <laughs> Deserved all of that. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, like I said, it did have a 50s vibe. It, um, Virginia, was that something like unintentional? Because I felt as soon as it saw it, like the even the plant, I was like, yeah. wait a minute. <laughs> I've seen stuff like that. So was that intentional or? Um, thank you for the question. I did want to kind of go back to like a creep show vibe or Tales from the Crypt kind of vibe. Um, a little bit of camp, a little bit of catch, but like I definitely wanted us to know, to see something that was familiar like Swamp Thing or Creature from the Black Lagoon. But I wanted to make it more feminine and bring in like a more mantis um, vibe with it. So taking something that we're familiar and we're used to seeing and then putting a little bit of a modern uh, twist and a um, femme, femme twist on it. So yeah, you're not wrong. Oh, okay. Thank you for noticing that. <laughs> uh, because I've seen a lot of 50s um, horror films and they're, they're wild. I mean, if you actually yeah. really look at them, I mean, it's just, it's so over the top of what they're doing, but it's so intense and so scary. And I think because it's black and white, it makes it even more interesting. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, it definitely had that vibe. So where did that idea come from? Like, like what was you doing? Like, I need to, this is important <laughs> to put this out there because not only did it have that sci-fi vibe, it did have Wendy who was trying to just do her her normal things and then she's being overlooked she's being replaced she's very shy and you know not being assertive so how did you combine both of those well it's um, a personal story to me in that i'm not a 20 something anymore and um i've had two children and there is a big discussion right now kind of about the like the sort of purpose of women in society and who gets to decide that men do and that is really frustrating and what's sort of happening in the news there's like i think it's a third of the country now where abortion is illegal and i it's sort of annoying that um a predominantly male portion of the population gets to decide what women get to do with their bodies 
their place in society, their place in the work in the workforce. And so I wanted to really make a movie about female rage and really a movie that celebrated female rage because a lot of times, once again, by men we're told that it's not okay to be angry. Um, but I think that's a completely appropriate response when faced with um, aggression and um, injustice. So that's kind of where where, I, where my head is. It's kind of horrifying what's happening right now. And I wanted to, as a filmmaker, have a comment about that, but in an entertaining way, you know. <laughs> Of course. Uh, my question is for Tikea. Um, how did you get involved with this project? Because to me, you are a big name. Like I grew up watching In Living Color and other things and seeing your name, it was just like, I can't believe it. I was this little girl watching this show and loving every character. I don't know, you were so good. So how did you get involved in this project? <laughs> well, Gina brought it to me, Virginia. Okay. Power Century, mm -hmm. also known as Gina, brought it <laughs> yeah. to me. And, and and it was so funny because she said, you know, the same, you know, she watched in Living Color. She thought it was funny. But then I, I kind of play the straight person in the show. So, <laughs> so I thought, oh, okay. And, and it's a horror film. I have no stomach for that. And then she said, she mentioned the creature. And I thought, wait a minute. You mean I get to sit in a makeup chair for hours and hours? Mm -hmm. I kind of like that. And because, you know, as, as an actress, I, I'm, I'm clay. I, I'm, I'm whatever the script demands and the, the furthest I can go for me, the more fun it is. And the furthest I can go from where I start to where I finish, the more fun it is. And so this was a, delightful chance to, even though there's some gross things in the film, it's not, to me, senseless violence for the sake of it. It is the story. The category is horror films or scary movies or however you want to categorize it. But the point is the story. And, and for me, the point is because I'm a nice person and people take advantage. And the older I get, now, now there's, I've added another category of, of, the, of people that are taken advantage of. And sometimes I feel like, man, you just can't be nice to people. Sometimes I'm just gonna grab them. <laughs> and in a movie, you can do things that are impolite to do in person. Was any of it improv? Because as a kid watching In Living Color, there were moments where they were script and then they would go off. Like, is that something that, you know, was it scripted? Do? Yeah. Well, I mean, I, no, there was a script and, and I respect a script unless the director says, now do what you want. And in fact, another film that I did last year, we did one take and then the director said, now, whatever you want. I thought, oh, I got to come to work with a bag of tricks, <laughs> but whatever, whatever the, the project demands, I used to be in an improv group and that's what we did improv. But for us, if you give me a script, I'm going to respect the script until you tell me to do something else. And it was a great script. And so it, she didn't need my help writing it. Although I did throw in something <laughs> and and she blessed me and i was shocked i don't know if you i didn't if you told me i didn't realize until the, the film opens with the lyrics of a song that i wrote which oh. i thought was was wonderful so that's the only thing i added other than that her script didn't need me for anastasia um you play beth and watching your character if i've had friends like that at work like they were very <laughs> They were very <laughs> assertive. They were like, I'm not going to take that crap from nobody, you know, type right. attitude. And it, it just felt so natural for you. Like, is that? <laughs> it's not. <laughs> but, girl, it was acting. You did a, a <laughs> Thank really you. good job. But I am not playing... assertive. <laughs> <laughs> but playing that character, I was wondering, um, is that something that you've experienced being windy and mm. needed a bath or vice versa? Definitely uh, have been the windy multiple times. I have things 
against me just as a woman, right? Just being biracial, being a woman, being light skinned, all these things. I walk into the room and all of that, uh, like automatically I'm apologizing for existing. <laughs> and I've already, I've always wanted like to have some, some Beth, you know, and, 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 and part of me wanted to be Beth. And I'm very, I think the only part that is kind of truthful in me is that if somebody hurts somebody I love, I do go kind of like very mama bear on people. And that is the only part that is very much me, you know, like if my friend was suffering in such a way, I think I, I would be able to speak up of me being Wendy. I would probably never, unless I got bitten by a plant and got superpowers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, we all need that plant. <laughs> I know, I know. Um, but yeah, no, and it was so fun to like, I don't know, explore that part of me that would would speak up at work, that would do that because it's very much not me. Um, and I, I love that. I am sassy, but I'm not. I'm not um, sassy for a, intention of myself. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. <laughs> <laughs> We're learning. I, I, I mean, I, I'm being coached by Gina. And <laughs> <laughs> what, what I also love about the characters because they they seem like everyday characters that you would experience, like yourself or someone you know. It, it didn't feel like it was just made up out of thin air. Like as I was watching, I felt like, oh, I've been a Wendy. Like I'm still a Wendy, but sometimes I could be a Beth. And sometimes mm -hmm. we could use a bath and, and if you don't, you know, just, you know, get in the garden and hope you get pricked or something. <laughs> but, but all work. seriousness, <laughs> I really love Gina that you put your personal, you know, experiences in there and you could see that in between the comedy parts and, and you know the the veins coming out and the blood and her eating her fingers like we all get nervous i bite my fingers you and then the boss himself was just atrocious like i've had a boss like that like just oh, doesn't yeah. care it was like and i've had that same experience where i didn't get a position but I had to train someone for the position and they didn't know nothing about. And I was angry. I was like, I've been there. And I really do love, like you put that in there. It's just not a story made up. It's, it's some truth to it. And I think it makes it authentic, even though it, it's so cute, but hey, we've all experienced that. Um, oh, and that, you that. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. <laughs> um, but then that goes to something that you said, um, that I read about in um, on the website says you you don't shy away from gore or violence. In my party, take audience on thrilling journeys, immersing them in intense experiences. Now, you take a leap into you know whatever the topic and subject. Is there something that you will not do because it's difficult? And what I mean by that because there's some topics that women go through that people are scared to, you know, talk about, to showcase because one, they don't want to get canceled. Two, it's like, that's taboo. Is there something you would go or you would be like, you know what? I'm gonna need some time for this. Um, so I used, I wrote with a writing partner for a bit and we talked about our, our boundaries and what we felt comfortable. We, we don't want to call women bitches. We don't want to be derogatory. Um, we will not write a sexual assault for a plot point. Mm. Um, I don't, I think that's kind of gross. Um, personally, I, it's not that I, and it's not my experience. If someone wants to write about their experience, they should have that voice and that, but that's not mine. And, that, and so I don't want to exploit that pain for, for women and, and trigger that. It happens so much to so many people that that's just something that I don't, that doesn't belong in, in my stories. Um, I mean, penises are on the table or on the ground, literally. Really? Severed, <laughs> literally. Severed penises. Um, there's not much, but yes, I would say. And I also, um, hurting animals, I don't. Mm. 
Um, I don't like to do that. Um, I do have a script where there is um, and an this like an, it's necessary for them to kill a deer to eat, but we don't. We're not going to show that. Like we're not going to show that. Um, so I mean, that's kind of it. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I mean, hey, you know, I believe me I've watched so many horror movies in my entire life from four or five years old to now and I've seen everything under the sun like things yeah, that me too. I mean it's just you're, I mean, you're sitting there you're just like well why <laughs> what was the point oh, one of more that? thing one oh. more thing I don't I don't like to show any kind of suffering I don't mm -hmm. think that I don't like like a torture porn kind of I don't mm -hmm. like to show that um I'm, I'm very, it really hurts my heart to watch it. I don't enjoy it. I don't find it entertaining. Um, the gore to me is art. Um, and a lot of times, especially when it's over the top, it's funny. So that is entertaining to me, but I don't like, like to see people suffering. Mm. That makes sense. Yeah, that does. We have such <laughs> different boundaries. <laughs> Like I said, like, you know, I've seen everything. I've, I've seen everything. Yeah. And even as a young child, I knew it was fake. You know, right. it didn't do anything. And sometimes we would see it as a family. You know, we would pop mm -hmm. in, you know, Hellraiser. And we all know what goes <laughs> on in Hellraiser. And we're just all sitting there. Oh, no, you no. know, <laughs> you know see, people getting skinned We had a and similar everything. childhood. <laughs> and, my, you know, my mom would be there. I mean, we saw The Fly. You know how that goes. Like, we went to the theater together to drive in. Original to see. or Jeff Goldblum? Jeff Goldblum. Okay, I saw the original. <laughs> <laughs> I love the original. I have like a figure right here. Um, With yeah, his little self, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a little terrifying. Because yeah. when I first saw it and saw it had, had a human head, and, and I was like, <laughs> If and you, you had you, brothers, it was really terrifying yeah. because they would hide in the closet and say, Help me. Oh, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what was really messed up about that scene is when he just got stumped on. I was just like, Really? Yeah. You're not going to help your yeah. friend? <laughs> but, he, but I guess he thought he was helping. <laughs> Uh, another part that I want to get into is the practical and uh, visual effects, if possible, because like I said, the the pulsating, whatever that thing is. Oh, I thought you were going um, differently. <laughs> um, was Nerdy. it supposed to represent something particular? Well, I feel like this is a good time for your listeners to, to talk about what is deadheading. Um, in case people don't garden and they don't know what it is. Deadheading is really just a term for pruning plants. So mm -hmm. if you have like a rose, say, and the flower is starting to wilt and the um, petals are starting to drop, you would cut the head off so that a new bloom could grow. So we were gonna always have, I mean, there, it is literal and it also is a metaphor in the film, but um, we were always, I always wanted to start in the garden because it's, it's Wendy's environment. It's where she feels the most comfortable. Um, no one's hassling her or being rude to her. Um, and she loves creating in that space. And, you know, so going back to like a creep show or a Tales from the Crypt, it always kind of starts with something banal and then moves into fantastical. And that's, that was why I started there. And it's like the catalyst for what, what happened. Um, the cocoon it was meant to be a cocoon with spikes on it and it wanted it to look a like alien um, and the, the gentleman who designed it Mark Fenlison he um, is a, a, a designer and has had a lot of experience in Hollywood and um, came up with a sort of nod to Little Shop of Horrors moment and, I was getting um, that kind of vibe too yeah well good and um, so he created the plant and there was a little um, prop in there that he could squeeze this little thing and it would it would pulse like that. You know, you went to work and you were biting. That whole practical effects was, was that like, like they have something attached and, you know, and you just bit it off or? 
and like how did that work out like for you the the, the plant was quite separate and mm. Gina filmed it meticulously so that it would be seamless and look real and so there was a certain way I had to hold it for camera and for me and for logic and for to to track from when I walked up to grab it so that was kind of painting by numbers very meticulous mm. So it would look, and then I had to drop it in a certain place in a certain way <laughs> so that it, it would all come together like one movement. But then separately, that was a completely different special effect where, where, and that's one of the things that grossed me out because, because, <laughs> you know, you have to hold it in your mouth, the, the whole scene until it comes out. So that was gross, but, <laughs> and in the film, it didn't look nearly as gross as I was grossed out on set. So I thought they cut up, they cut the gross out of it. So I, I didn't know what happened, but but yeah, that was that was. A, and you know, you do that a lot, just like you know when I don't know, it was pretty gross. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we couldn't make it too gross because in the very next scene, you're doing like origami. And so if it was like a big giant oh, bloody no, thing, I thought, it would... I thought oh. she meant after when I, when I'm in his office and I'm yeah, oh, yeah. sorry. Yeah. When she's oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but it's not like bleeding profusely either when I go to the bathroom. Right. So yeah, mm -hmm. you're right. That's a normal special effect. Just, mm -hmm. you know, in the scene in the office, there's blood mm -hmm. and and I'm, I'm really amazed at the editor because a lot of things that, you know, as whenever you have, for me, whenever you have special effects, you have mishaps and mishap after mishap after mishap, we would do the rehearsal and the, the special effects. See, this is how it works. Oh, that's beautiful. And action. <laughs> so, but that's you know that's movie making and that, that's kind of the magic i think for me i'll speak for myself part of me is still you know three four years old amazed at the magic of movie making and how everyone can be fine in a room and then when you watch it in a theater you're horrified because what's happening looks real mm -hmm. believe it even when you're you know that it's fake you believe it because of the way the filmmakers made it look. You mentioned the editor. Yes. Um, yes. He also is a producer on this and he is just fantastic, has a storied history in, in the genre. Um, he actually um, d d designed the stick man for the Blair Witch Project. Oh, and, wow. Um, the very epic. first one, right? It's epic, yeah. And oh, he, wow. and he um, directed, a, directed a film called Alien Raiders um that you should definitely watch because it's it's a wonderful and um yeah he's a writer director also so he was pitching ideas and edits um so i just wanted to give a shout out to him since you mentioned him because he really has such a key role in helping this vision to compose anyway carry on <laughs> <laughs> so um the suit itself like when we, you know, you get part of the tell or whatever that is, and then it was like the reveal. I love um, the shot of just the tail hitting um, the floor. What, was that, Takea, were you in that? Was that I you? I sure was. Oh, oh wow. I wasn't, not when the, probably when the tail hit, but when you okay. saw the whole thing. The whole was, thing? That was you. Yeah. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. The way you were moving and stuff like that. So the suit itself, like how, how was that? Because, it looked so that 50s sci-fi, but also current, but it, 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 but it gave like a terrifying alien feel, although it, it's insect-like, like how did that work? Like the design for that? A sexy mantis. <laughs> Very sexy. <laughs> but it, but it, to be sexy. it had hips and everything. <laughs> Only the screaming girl got to be sexy in the 50s. Now, <laughs> thanks to Dina, the creature gets to be sexy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just don't she steps that. into her power. Yeah, and I, <laughs> I love that when we were shooting that, and after the three people that helped me stand up, you know, <laughs> got me standing. That I love that because I mean, you know, you know, when you're acting, you are the character, and I loved being Wendy, discovering that she's not Wendy anymore, and mm -hmm. discovering because we we shot a lot more than you see, discovering. That, that I have a body that I can show off. Not, not like, 
Uh, Farah. Farah. Not, Farah. Quite, not quite Farah, but I could I could be Farah in this in this new body that I have. Yeah, I could can. wield power over men that that might otherwise harm me in this body it was extremely empowering even though i had to help have help standing up it was <laughs> the power of that suit was phenomenal you know i don't know who the creature would have been uh, if 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 beth got bit or if Farrah mm -hmm. got bit mm -hmm. but but because yeah. it's windy that got bitten it, it, it's 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 windy's creature but because right. it's windy you know i think she uses beth's empowerment to to be able to stand in that body yeah and i think I, it would look very different if beth was the one bitten like i don't think much would have changed i think she still would have been like at her podium answering phone calls <laughs> and people just hey, looking like, like that right just, just the big eyes like <laughs> yeah like, uh, no, I mean, no. <laughs> yeah like yeah whatever, have antenna, what whatever. yeah whatever <laughs> like i think <laughs> I think it wouldn't have. It would have definitely been a different story. <laughs> like that would be a deleted scene <laughs> at the end. Yeah, I mean, oh gosh, yeah, I don't, I don't know that it would have. Uh, yeah, like I don't think her character would have changed that much. I think she would have just kind of been like, "This is what I am." Mm -hmm. um, just heightened, just heightened back, just heightened, <laughs> just heightened up. Like, oh yeah, like instead of hitting him with a phone, I just mm -hmm. walk in and look at him, and he'd be like, "Yeah, you're right," <laughs> <laughs> which is maybe, a power I wish I had. <laughs> maybe, maybe Beth can get pricked in the feature. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you know, that I'm would be funny. Still lobbying for the feature. So, yeah, and then it could be like a buddy comedy, I'm like, with like the odd couple. <laughs> Type thing. Um, She's like going crazy, and I'm just like, whatever. <laughs> I'm gonna go in here and get a snack. Yes. <laughs> Lastly, I wanted to um, talk about was the symbolism of the privates, <laughs> just the heart, and it looks like the heart and the the private the, the penis, right? Like, was it a heart? Like, oh right? no, it's, it uh, it's, it's, it's balls and penis. Oh, it was. Oh, oh yeah. it got package. closer. It's the whole package, yeah. <laughs> so, um. I mean, I have an idea what that could mean, but I want to hear it from you. <laughs> like, so w what was that final symbolism that Wendy then tore off <laughs> and threw into the ground <laughs> because well, she was tired of him cutting her plants? <laughs> and her I mean, she told him what was going to happen. And he kept it. Um, yeah. And he did it anyway, so there are consequences. Um, and also, I think that's part of her power she knows what it's like to have her power taken away from her. And when she steps into the mantis, um, I think that she takes her power back and she removes it from those who have, have done that to her is what I think. Mm -hmm. um, she takes John's head and she takes Benny's, Ben's package. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's her head. <laughs> that bit about, you know, what you said, she told him, but, 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 people men who take advantage of women don't listen right and, and i and so that even though that was beyond my comfort level i really appreciated it because it it made the point you know this is what happens when you don't listen to us and we come into our power because mm -hmm. she did warn she didn't just do it she said if you do this again this is what but if you don't if you're not hearing me because i'm a woman then something bad's gonna happen See, boundary set. Boundary yep. not let you do. Yep. Consequences. 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 Uh, so, so this film is still in the film festival circuit, is it? Or we are just starting oh, our, okay. our um, festival run. Uh, okay. We premiered this past Saturday at the Dances of Film Film Festival, which is an amazing film festival that had to think of our 200 films it's still going on until this sunday you should check it out it's at the chinese theater um, in hollywood um we have our uh the second round of the uh midnight shorts we were in the first round of the midnight shorts this last saturday they have the second round um this saturday coming and then awards on sunday so we're hoping for that audience award we'll see um <laughs> but yeah it's, it's um we are also, we just got into the Horror Hound uh, Horror Convention in Indianapolis, 
that will be August 18th through 20th. Um, and hopefully there will be tons more. But like I said, we're just at the start of it. So um, you really want to uh, take the show on the road. Okay. Okay. And I <laughs> hope nothing but the best for this film. It was so funny. It was to the point. It had a message. And I, it just, it just brought back like that old, like 50 style sci-fi that we need more of. And I, and I really did enjoy it. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch it and to talk to us about it. It's been, this is my first, my first um, big interview and it's been so fun. You've, you've made it so nice. <laughs> Um, my thousandth interview and i appreciate you as well (laughs) thank you i want to say thank you so much for joining me on here to talk about your film it was so cute it was so fun i do appreciate it and i wish nothing but the best from the film circuit and the festivals and more and i wish nothing but the best for all of you because you guys were great Thank Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. And if you want to see more videos like this, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button and enjoy my other videos on my channel. And make sure you check out this film. If you see it on the roster at a film festival, break your neck and watch it. It is so fun. You will enjoy it. (laughs) (laughs) Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you.